Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, since we have completed the Paragons of Justice, um, I will be reciting some poetry here that I have personally um, uh, composed in light of Karbala, in light of Ashura, in light of the Prophet's family that I would like to share as my contribution. And my way of expressing any sentiment whatsoever towards the sacrifice of Imam Hussein and his loyal companions and family um, 1400 years ago. Assalamu ala Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein wa ala Ulad al Hussein wa ala Ashab al Hussein. Just to make it a little bit um, more real, this um, recording, uh, although over many years now, um, I've been reading not just this, but other accounts and listening to various lectures and so forth. Um, I'm just going to um, brief the listeners of, um, you know, a, a, a very quick sort of summary of what, from my, you know, basic understanding um, of what occurred um, and what happened. Um, basically, um, historically, um, after the Prophet's passing, there was a, um, a time period where, um, hold on, let me just rewind. Uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, um, on his last Hajj, he was returning back to Medina and he um, encamped in a valley called Ghadir. Ghadir is um, between Mecca and Medina. And it is a valley uh, called Ghadir Khum. And there, uh, it is said that 125, 130,000 companions um, of the Prophet all had stopped because this was a massive hajj. This was the last hajj and the farewell hajj of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So it was this particular chosen valley uh, known as Ghadir Khum between Mecca and Medina, uh, where the Prophet uh, had, had stopped and encamped. and. Um, it was a valley, therefore there was um, water, and hence it was a place one could stop. Um, so there, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave his farewell sermon, and in that sermon, he basically took the hand of Ali, his son-in-law, his cousin, and, um, and raised it, and he basically said, whoever considers me as his mullah, then Ali is his mama. And so what happened was that that was called the Ghadir Declaration. Um, and that is um, an event that basically is unprecedented. There was no other companion or, or other, any other individual to whom the Prophet, peace be upon him, basically, um, you know, um, made such an announcement. Uh, or such a declaration and and zoomed into such a person on that level of all. Um, and so that was done. And it is said that for three days straight, um, because of, you know the, the vast amount of uh, companions there, uh, the, the pledge of allegiance to Ali was now being made. Um, and uh, he was being congratulated for this um, position that the prophet, um, had uh, dressed upon him being the mola, the, um, the 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 leader of the believers was now that um, position and title granted to Ali, um, and hence mola Ali is how we refer to him, uh, him being an imam and the um, the mola of all the believers. Um, so for three days, um, as per narrations, the companions um, 
were pledging allegiance to Ali, and there was nobody who resisted that. So that happened. And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, you know, uh, in the next six months or so, had passed away. And now it was a matter of uh, who's going to take on the leadership. This event was preceding the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him, but uh, without getting into matters that I'm unable to get into, apparently, um, this incident was somehow forgotten. And, um, uh, and, and there was a nomination of the, uh, the, cap, the next, you know, successor to the Prophet. And so uh, Abu Bakr, uh, or the Allahu An, uh, was made the caliph or the, uh, the leader for the Muslims. Um, and, and after him, it didn't go to Ali, but rather it went to Omar. Then after Omar, um, it went to Uthman. And then after Uthman, it went to Ali. Peace be upon them all. Um, and now after Ali, who is poisoned in Kufa uh, by certain rebel, rebels uh, in, in Ramadan, on the 19th of Ramadan, while praying, He's poisoned, um, um, and um, he's poisoned. And two days later, he passes away on the twenty-first of Ramadan in Kufa and uh, buried there. So his successor, by way of uh, Imamat, um, is Hassan, his eldest son, the son of Imam Hussein, the, the brother, the older brother of Imam Hussein. And so that goes to him. But during that same time, there was a rivaling uh, clan um, who's historically, you know, goes back to Hind and Abu Sufyan's. Um, uh, these two personalities who are responsible for. Um, uh, for um, uh, how could I say it? The Prophet's uncle who passed away in the Battle of Uhud, he was martyred and uh, he was a very adored uh, uncle of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And, um, and Hind and Abu Sufyan who were arch enemies of Islam um, very active enemies. Um, they thought, you know, how can we further torture the prophet, knowing his one of his favorite uncles has passed on. And so, what they did with his with the uh, with with his corpse, uh, Hamza, was that they opened him up and they ate from his organs. Um, they ate his liver, basically, and that um, really had. Um, further impact on the Prophet, peace be upon him. So this couple basically had um, a son named Muawiyah. And um, it is not sure even if, um, you know, if um, Hind bore the son through Abu Sufyan or perhaps someone else. Um, and, and Muawiyah, basically, during the time of Imam Hussein, Imam Hassan, the eldest son of Imam Ali, uh, assumed um, assumed uh, you know leadership. He was self-appointed, and it was something he was uh, being for, and um, and he declared himself proudly as the caliph or the leader and. Um, uh, the characteristic of the uh, prophetic way and the way uh, of his family is that uh, they never wanted bloodshed. Uh, peace was always a priority and unity. Um, um, and so to avoid uh, internal war and um, any sort of bloodshed whatsoever, uh, Imam Hassan basically um, mm, removed himself from that position and he signed a uh, an agreement um, he gave you know there was an agreement between him and Muawiyah certain conditions that 
if he was to be the cal caliph, then there would be certain conditions that he would, um, you know, uphold the teachings of Allah and the Prophet, peace be upon him. And um, and um, after his passing, he would um, he would not um, pass on anything to his son Yazid, and that it the rule would go back into the family of the prophet. And um, and during the time of Muawiyah's rule, um, that he would not enforce um, um, things that were uh, not in the uh, Islamic code. Um, and he would um, also not um, pressure um, uh, Imam Hassan um, to, um, you know, uh, make allegiance and so forth. So he was, you know, uh, under these sort of conditions. And based on that, Imam Hassan um, basically stepped down and left the matter to, um, to Allah. And so after now the passing of Muawiyah, um, the, the whole, um, you know, um, treaty or um, contract was broken um, and the leadership now went into Yazid's um, hands. Um, so that was done. And now instead of going to Hussein, um, uh, not only that, but during Moabia's time, um, uh, Imam Hassan was also killed um, by the forces of Muawiyah and who had basically influenced the wife of uh, Imam Hassan to poison him and um, and so that uh, you know she would uh, be given in marriage to Yazid uh, who would be the the, the next ruler um, so basically, Imam Hassan was not only poisoned, but, uh, you know, his life was also threatened during the time of Muawiyah. And, um, and likewise, during Muawiyah's range, um, any, any sort of uh, outward expression of Ali was banned, uh, so much so that um, the cursing of Ali would be a mandatory practice um, prior to um, any khutbah or Friday sermon. So that went on for 60 years. It was like you weren't allowed to name your child Ali, nor were you allowed to praise and show affection and admiration for the household of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And in that last sermon of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, um, I leave for you two weighty matters, the Quran and my Ahlul Bayt. And if you hold fast to them, you will be safe um, till you reach you know, till, till the day of judgment, basically. So um, these two weighty matters, um, you know, uh, there was manipulation and the, the second one, meaning my family was uh, reinterpreted as the sunnah, meaning my way, as opposed to the family of the prophet, again, to downplay. And that is why even the name Ali, any form of remembrance that would instill love or, um, uh, water the love of the Prophet's family, uh, which is a command in the Quran where Allah is uh, commanding the believers um, that I ask for you of no reward except that you love the family, the, the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him. That was That is a requirement of faith um, as per divine command. And um, so any form of remembrance would be a political threat because if you remember uh, then you're basically um, watering that love, the seeds of love, which are ingrained regardless. And uh, that itself became a threat. So the best thing would be to uproot the matter by getting rid of these uh, living descendants who basically uh, serve as reminders. Um, so now Yazid is in power and he has his men set up and he's probably times 10 than his father and grandfather, because as um, as uh, as generations come forth, they basically uh, supersede the parents and their ancestors. That's the whole 
point of um, the evolution. Um, so Yazid is now in power um, and, um, and he wants to make sure he has no threat and there is no uprising, there is no questioning. And uh, he is, you know, the absolute ruler of the uh, Muslim community. And at that time, you know, all the necessary works and expansions had taken place. So he was inheriting a huge uh, kingdom, basically. Um, and there's no way he'd want to give up the throne. He would want to give up the crown. He'd want to give up anything, that sort of power and indulgence in, you know, luxury and wealth and women and wine and um, all the basically, um, all the stuff that our prophet, peace be upon him, um, uh, warned us against. Um, so he, um, yeah, so uh, Yazid and his ways uh, persisted. And now he um, was getting, um, you know, he was getting the allegiance of the masses, uh, which is typical because um, the masses are like sheep and they listen to the leaders. But there is that 1%, the, uh, those who are awake, those who are uh, not in the masses, those who know and those who see beyond um, the lies that are told to us. Um, you know, and so Imam Hussein definitely is not interested in giving allegiance to um, to Yazid. Um, that is not even a question of consideration. And um, hence, you know, he's minding his business, or at least trying to, but he cannot because, you know, every day there is pressure. Um, coming to his house um, and asking him, when is he going to give his uh, oath of allegiance to Yazid? And uh, Imam Hussein is saying that I am the grandson of the Prophet, peace be upon him. <clears throat> we are the household <coughs> of the Prophet. Um, and we, uh, in whose home uh, revelation was revealed and the angel Gabriel descended and our household um, considered uh, by divine order uh, purified, there is no way I would give um, any sort of validation and acceptance to a leader who is tyrannical and does not uh, represent the religion of my grandfather um, and the teachings. And hence, I will never do so uh, at the cost uh, under any, any um, you know, under any circumstance, I will not, neither will my followers, neither will my family. Um, and that was it. So he was definitely resistant, resistant to that. Um, uh, but when it got to a point where his life was threatened, and, um, you know, it was too much. Um, he was receiving letters from Kufa, uh, which was then the capital because during the caliphate, Imam Ali, um, uh, the, uh, the, the capital rule uh, was basically um, uh, shifted from Medina to Kufa, um, where Imam Ali was. Um, and uh, it was very difficult for Imam Ali to be in Medina. So, you know, the capital had to be Kufa, and that's where it was until. Um, um, until uh, I believe Yazid's time. Um, but in any case, the people of Kufa, uh, who were, you know, followers of uh, Imam Ali, they had sent letters knowing that Imam Ali had a surviving son and that, um, you know, they wanted to give their allegiance um, and leadership uh, in the hands of Hussein ibn Ali. And so over 70,000 letters had come into Imam Hussein reassuring him that, oh, son of the Prophet, come. Grandson of the Prophet, come. And, uh, you know, we want you. We are sick and tired of these tyrannical people, and we don't want to be led by them. It's uh, hell for us, so please come. And we are here as loyal uh, partisans and, and followers uh, to you and your household. Give us that honor. So Imam Hussein basically sends his cousin, 
um, Muslim bin Aqil to check the situation because that would be a huge move. So that's from Medina. Um, the plan would be shifting uh, from Medina, migrating from Medina to Mecca, um, and then from Mecca on to Kufa. Uh, so he sends his cousin Muslim bin Aqil and Muslim bin Aqil arriving there, he's, you know, uh, given that reassurance by the Kufans in the thousands saying, yes, indeed, call upon uh, Hussein and we are ready and we are, we will give our life, we will give everything for him and, uh, and we, we will be his loyal supporters. So he sends a message back saying green light, you know, um, and that message is sent back. So only after that is received, Imam Hussein is now um, feeling that sort of sense of, you know, okay, it's safe for me and my family to now leave. We're going to leave Medina. We're going to bid farewell to our prophet, peace be upon him, seek his blessings and permission. And so he does that. And it was um, a very um, emotional time for him because now he's asked to give up his city of residence. He is he knows he is he knows his position he knows from childhood he is a destined martyr and he is um going to be not martyred in a specific way and he will be always remembered and you know his destiny is written so there was no escape from that so um you know leaving medina with his family and knowing that i'm never going to come back um that wasn't easy but um this great Ashik is now leaving um, into the um, into the battlefield where death would meet him, but death is actually ishk, uh, love. And so the lover awaits him um, because union is uh, what always love asks for and wants. And so he's actually being pulled to towards the path of union. And he knew that it wouldn't be a normal sort of death in the hands of, uh, in, uh, of love. It would be a very bloodied one. So now he's, you know, he his followers, 72 in total, <clears throat> are, uh, you know, uh, now in Mecca. And it is uh, a hajj. Uh, it is, you know, the hijjah, it's the hajj season. And Imam Hussein is obviously going to perform his hajj. He performs his hajj and um, uh, not even able to complete it because the um, the agents of Yazid are now in full force uh, hunting down this uh, lamb, basically, seeing how they can get him and perhaps even you know kill him in Mecca, which is considered a sanctuary equal to Medina. And in a sanctuary, as per divine law, you are not allowed to even shed blood, let alone harm animals or, you know, um, cut down trees. Um, so, um, so basically Imam Hussein, uh, uh, an ambassador of peace says, I wouldn't want bloodshed because of me. Let me uh, wrap everything up and leave. So he wasn't able to complete his hajj. And now he's left with his caravan of Ashikin, of lovers and loyal lovers uh, towards Kufa, where he assumes that the people are there awaiting him. But deep down, he knows the truth of the matter, um, even if not uttered. So now he's on his way to Kufa. Uh, this is a very cumbersome journey. It's hot. This is Arabia, mm, scorching sun, children, women, companions, you know, enough supplies to last till whenever, unknown what uh, is to be met on the way, and unknown if they will be able to have their supplies last, more importantly, like the children, right, and, and the women folk and so forth. And, and so, so this is what was happening. So the intention was to arrive in Kufa, but what happens is that Yazid, he, um, he you know, um, they're aware that, um, you know, um, uh, this uh, group is coming 
these people are coming and once they come and enter Kufa, it's it's basically, you know, end of business for Yazid because um, the amount of loyal followers um, would basically create a, a, an uproar and an uprising against the government of Yazid and his commanders there and his governors there. So to avoid that in total, um, the best thing to do would be to intercept uh, or, you know, put a halt to the approaching of Imam Hussein and his family who are on their way to Kufa. So there is a there is a there is an area, Nineveh or um, Karbala, which was also mentioned, you know, in in in, in the Bible um, and even in the prophetic traditions, the Prophet peace be upon him was told about the the martyrdom of his grandson on the soil of Karbala. And so anyhow, uh, Yazid's um, man who were, uh, is sent with an army to basically stop um, Imam Hussein in this area called Karbala. Um, the place of tragedy, I think that's what it means. The land where, uh, the land of tragedy. Um, Bala is tragedy, Karb, I, I'm not 100% sure, um, but anyhow, it can be looked up. So um, they are stopped there, and, and so basically that's where their camps or their tents were made, and that's where, the, as per this book, that's where the property was purchased, and that's where their supplies were running short, and that's where the Euphrates was also there, but they the army had on purpose blocked any sort of access to the Euphrates. And when you stop water, basically, you are killing um, individuals because we can survive uh, with water. Um, we cannot survive without water. And um, and that's that was the whole plan, you know, cut off the water supply. And so, um, you know, the, the, the situation was obviously getting desperate and um, it was getting very difficult um, day by day. And say the Zainab, the sister of Imam Hussein, um, you know, she was basically a responsible um, female taking care of the children, watching over her brother, uh, trying to be of emotional and moral support to everybody there. Um, you know, and being steadfast and um, solid at the same time. And uh, likewise, you know, they were all vulnerable, hearing the children cry and not being able to do anything. Uh, the supplies basically diminishing to a point where, you know, children are hungry and thirsty, but there's nothing that can be done, not even water. Um, and uh, there was a there were attempts to dig wells, but um, of, again, no use. Uh, nothing happened. Mm. Um, so going on to basically the ninth day, what happens is we have um, we have um, um, Abbas, um, who was given allowance to go and uh, get water, um, go and get water for the children, um, for the for the people, especially Sukina, the daughter of Imam Hussein. So he was sent, um, you know, uh, past midnight. Um, in order to do so, and um, and he was martyred. Um, both his hands were um, uh, decapitated, um, and um, basically he met his martyrdom. And uh, Abbas was basically the the backbone of Imam Hussein. Um, the martyrdom of 
Abbas basically had a great impact on um, Hussein because he was, for him, the flag bearer, the water carrier, um, and also his backbone. So that, you know, um, was very impactful. Um, and his sons had already, um, you know, been martyred and now going into the 10th day, um, the last um, prior to his martyrdom was that of um, his youngest son, uh, Ali Asghar, the six month old baby who was thirsty for water and he he thought um, that by presenting this baby, it would evoke some empathy and sympathy uh, by the so-called believers um, uh, to basically um, give water to a thirsty baby who's innocent. Um, and uh, so that request was met by uh, a three-pronged arrow that went into the neck of this child and he, he had to return to the mother in that state. Um, so that was um, it. And then came forth the martyrdom of um, the grandson of the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Um, uh, I will request a moment of silence where we can recite the Fatiha our prayer of peace in our hearts. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up my um, poems as um, a way to uh, share um, some of my heart readings on the Ahlul Bayt. I will do that in, um, yeah, I, I can do it in this video clip actually, so it's fine. There are quite a number of poems here, so I'm just gonna pick out An Ashik's game. An Ashik's game, the battlefield is stained, your followers an enviable attain. Imam Zain in pain. Zainab laments pure rain. Ashur Ali in disdain. Sakina trembles, ain ain. Abbas's body blain. Service his only aim. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, shimmer enters hell's lanes, arrows drip, Dam Hussein, Shah Ast Hussein, eyes on Zuljana's mane, your eyes downcast, plain, perfumed corpse in Ishk's chains, cosmos numb to explain, silence I ascertain. Skies fail to contain, heaven wails, fails to retain. Beyond time, your name again, in every grain, every sip, your name, a lover's terrain, a holy campaign, truth and justice twain, from injustice and tyranny we abstain. Say not tragedy, are you insane? No loss, only gain, their claims how inhumane. With you we remain, our Mola Hussein, all else mundane, our hearts breathe. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. Ya Habibi, Ya Hussein is another poem. Ya Habibi, Ya Hussein. 
Medina to Mecca you came, peace, your caravan. 72 lovers from Haramain, my heart complains of this pain, driving me insane, you slain, not in vain, eternal spirit of Hashemain. Love we feign, truth we claim, Ya Habibi, Ya Hussein, no blame to Abel or Cain, Yazid's shame, his father insane, a tyrant's reign for worldly gain, how vain, an ashik's gain, an ashik's gain, the battlefield is stained, your followers in enviable attain, Imam Zain in pain, Zainab, Zainab laments pure rain, Asghar Ali in disdain, Sakina trembles, ain, ain, Abbas's body lain, service is only aim, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. Shimmer enters, hell's lanes, arrows drip, Dham Hussein, Shah Us Hussein. Eyes on Zuljana's mane, your eyes downcast, plain, perfumed corpse in Ishq's chain. Cosmos numb to explain, silence I ascertain. Skies fail to contain, heaven wills, fails to retain. Beyond time, your name again, in every grain, every sip, your name. A lover's terrain, a holy campaign, truth and justice twain. From injustice and tyranny, we abstain, say not tragedy, are you insane? No loss, only gain, their claim, how inhumane with you we remain, Allah Hussein. All else mundane, our hearts breathe, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. My Imam, our Imam. Howling winds of a desert sky, pin drop silence, I hear children cry. In a thirsty camp, Zainab sigh, my Hussein, our Hussein, my Hussein, our Hussein. An eerie silence of sorrowful stars, screeching winds heard afar, resounding hooves, rupture stillness, plagued savages of metaphysical illness, Panting breaths of a desolate landscape. Ruqayya clings to Rabab's cape. 72 heartbeats drum in unison. My Hussein, our Hussein, my Hussein, our Hussein. Every grain witnesses pain. Tigers and Kufa weep in shame. Skies and tears of crimson rain. Abbas's limbs dismembered and slain, water for infants his soul aim, his flag has risen so to remain all in worship, not questioning why, heads bow to him the most high, tomorrow our destiny to valiantly die, Yazid's triumph a colossal lie, a constant chorus resounds our hearts, my Hussein, our Hussein, my Hussein, our Hussein. Night descends, loyalists huddle, dim lanterns and empty suckle. Ali Muhammad's dauntless struggle, baby Asghar, Ismail's pride, Shaharbanu, an enviable bride, Sajjad, son of royal hegemony, savior to Hussein's noble progeny. Devotional prayers, the, the Imam leads, Sukaina witnesses, her heart pleads, Father, may I join you, I, your steed, on the eve of Ashura, as witness by Ali Tathira, poor with the forty, initially forceful, guilt and shameful, repent, repenting, remorseful, accedes to submission. Mola Janam, forgive us of the mission. Consciousness sharpened to the finest precision, awakened humanity a divine decision. Men and women of unattainable glory, Karbala etched as an epigram story. 
history stain with Hassan's Hussein, my Hussein, our Hussein, my Hussein, our Hussein. Sunset pursued by a sacred serene. Silent please with meditative hymns. 54 devotees upon unswerving limbs. 18 members of Ban Hashim, a mark of unrivaled chivalry, eternally dissolved misery, echoing the vague fall for his sake, love we claim never to forsake, this life for you, this life but one for you, Jano, a thousand and one, a thousand and one, tears of hunger and desperate cries, revertebrating, revertebrate vertebrating allowed a million sighs a bloody baby returned to his mother joining the ranks of his elder brother father cry not as you meet with this fate we await you with Haider at heaven's gate in ecstasy you fought like the lion of god assisted by habib and the zulfiqar Al Zahra lamented with every arrow, my son whose death brings me sorrow. The last, this last breath, the victorious tomorrow. Your death is humanity's forgotten victory, inked in history. You are truth's legacy. You shifted the cosmos forever eternally. Fatah. And so this concludes um, the two poems shared. And also going back to one point is that on the night, on the ninth um, of Ashura, uh, Imam Hussein had uh, put the lights out and he told his companions um, uh, that you know tomorrow is your destiny and uh, you will not be here tomorrow this is um, this is it you know you have an opportunity now to return to your homes and you may return it is dark um, the night is a veil and no one would know not even us so um, it is it is me they want not you and you are free to go, you are free, and um, you have my permission, and, and uh, you may return to your families, to your homes, um, you may return back to Medina. And so um, his companions basically said to, in reply to that, that if we could give 70 lives, or as per my poem, a thousand and one, a thousand and one, we would never, ever go back. We would give lives over and over for you. Um, our loyalty is with you, and may we give our life for you. So the effect, this is the effect of the Husseini, is that um, um, they bring about um, an effacement um, of love, uh, unlike any other sort of uh, experience one can actually go through. Um, and it's uh, it's similar to the concept of Isa alayhi salam. Um, some of the narrations of the Imams also say that Isa alayhi salam was born in Karbala. Um, and he wept with his companions there as well. Um, so there's, um, that as well in the tradition that uh, you know that link to Isa alayhi salam and that sort of uh, embodiment and energy and that effect on the people um, and so um, I conclude with um, simply saying that um, This is not, um, this sort of remembrance is nothing but to remember our own reality. And that um, through the lessons and this beautiful epic story and incident, um, values are brought back to life. 
and uh, we are reminded why we should live uh, for truth and justice and um, never ever um, give our hand um, to injustice and tyranny and even if that means the cost of our life the beheading of ourselves the total martyrdom of oneself um, in the way of truth uh, that is an honorable uh, death rather than to live in security um, where truth is compromised um, so this is a reminder and that is why the lovers of Imam Hussein, uh, no matter what tradition one comes from, they are remembered. Um, the Hindus um, take on processions in India, remembering Hussein. They venerate him and they also have a tradition where they say that uh, certain, um, you know, uh, Hindus had assisted Imam Hussein during um, during the incident um, and they claim that lineage um, irrespective uh, he is a universal personality and figure like jesus salam, like buddha and um, these are um, uh, you know uh, lanterns of truth uh, the christians um, you know speak of hussein Ali Salam. Um, um, every great leader is aware. So, <clears throat> um, so it's it's basically um, a reminder for ourselves, basically, um, and that is it. And so I conclude um, this reading, and um, and that is it. Thank you for listening. Salam alaikum.